Good day, students, and welcome to part two of the Acupuncture College Level Math Test. Uh, we're going to be going over some sample questions here. So uh, remember that you can find a copy of this document on collegeboard.com. So let's go ahead and take a look at question number six. All right. So it says, an apartment building contains 12 units consisting of one bedroom and two bedroom apartments that rent for $316 and $450 per month, respectively. When all units are rented, uh, the total monthly rental is four thousand nine hundred and fifty. What is the number of two? Uh, what is the number of two bedroom apartments? <clears throat> so let's uh, start by declaring our variables. Um, let um, x uh, equal number of um, of one bedroom, and then let y equal number of um, two bedroom. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up the equation. We know that the, the total number of units available is 12, right? So what does that tell me? The one bedrooms and the two bedrooms add together to give you 12 units, okay? Because each of these counts as one unit. So first uh, uh, set of equations we'll have is x plus y equals 12. This is a number of units equation. Now let's talk about cost. 360 for our one bedroom and 450 for two bedroom. We know that the uh, price, the total price is quantity times unit price, right? So the price for the one bedroom total is going to be the unit price times the total number, which is 360 times X plus. And then for the, um, for the two bedroom, the total price is going to be the unit price times the quantity. The quantity is Y. The unit price is 450. So it's going to be 450Y. Okay. All right. So uh, what we're going to do next is basically find out what the final total amount is. So how much is it in all? After everything is rented, after all units are rented, you, you have a total of 4000 uh, nine hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, so let's write that down. Four thousand nine hundred and fifty. So what we have here is a system of equations with two variables. Uh, we need to solve for y. Okay, we don't need to solve it completely because it asks us for just one one of the pieces of information, which is the number of two bedrooms. Okay, so to do that, we need to get solve for y. So if I want to solve for y, I can uh, strategically eliminate the x. So if I eliminate the x, then I'll just solve for y, okay? So the method I'm going to use here is the method um, of the method of elimination, okay? So let's go ahead and eliminate the eliminate the x, and that will give us what uh, y is. All right, so if I want to eliminate the x, I have to create opposites, all right? I want to make these two uh, values opposite. So which is the easiest to make the opposite of the other? Since this is 360... I can make this a multiple of 360, the opposite of 360, by multiplying by its opposite, which is negative 360. So what am I saying here? Well, let's multiply equation 1 by negative 360 so that the x is the opposite, and I can eliminate them by combining the two equations, all right? So what I'm going to do is distribute this negative 360 to all the three terms here. So that's going to yield negative 360x and any times negative 360 times y is negative 360y and any times negative 360 by 12 you get um you get you get 4300 and actually negative uh 4320 okay and I just bring move over equation two, line it up perfectly. 360x plus 450y equals 4950. Okay, so we're going to combine the two equations by adding them. <clears throat> when I uh, combine the two equations, these two are opposites by design, they cancel out. So these two negative 360 plus 450 is 90y. Equals when I subtract these two, I'll get positive 630. To finally isolate y, I divide both sides by 90. So divide by 90, divide by 90, and I'll have uh, y equals, you can cancel out the zeros, so it's like dividing by 10. 9 goes into 63 7 times. 
So you have seven two bedroom units. So the answer is option letter E. Okay. All right, moving right along. Question seven, it says if um, the two squares and the figure below have respective areas indicated in the square yards, how many uh, yards of fencing are needed to enclose the two regions, okay? So remember what the area um, of a square is, right? An area of a square is basically S square, right? That's what the area of a square is. So because we know that the sides are congruent. So what is S in each case? So for the little rectangle, um, I know that S square is equal to five for the little rectangle. So what is S going to be? For the little rectangle, S is going to be the square root of five. Well, how did I get that? You just simply root both sides, right? So the dimensions of this little square is root five. So you have root five all on all sides, okay? So root five, root five, root five, and root five, okay? Because root five times root five is five. How about for the big rectangle, the same procedure applies, right? S squared equals 125. So what is S going to be? You just root both sides, square root, square root. And you're going to have S equals the square root of 125, okay? All right, let me just indicate what they are. This is small, and this is large. Okay, now let's let's reduce this one root 125. So let's do it over here. Root 125. What goes in the 125? So then the last number is five. We can take five out of it. Take out five. We're gonna have five goes in the 12. Two five goes in the 25. Five. Five goes here five times. So this here square root of five times five is five. So these two come out of the five. This is by itself, so I can't, it can't come out, I can't root it, so it stays as a radican. So you have five root five, okay? So the square root of the side measure of the bigger rectangle is five root five, okay? So this is five root five, and this is five root five. All four sides, five root five, okay? All right, so what is the area? I mean, what's the perimeter? All right, so perimeter is basically equal for s, right? Because you have four sides of equal measure, s plus s plus s, s plus s plus s. So perimeter of the small one called piece of s is going to be four times the measure of one side, which is four times root five, uh, which is equal to uh, uh, four root five, okay? And it was the perimeter of the large, let's call it piece of l, is going to be four times the measure of one side, right? Four times five root five, which is equal to 20 root 5. That's perimeter of the large of the large rectangle. Uh, so what is the total perimeter? Total? The total uh, perimeter to enclose both regions, total uh, per, uh, perimeter uh, is basically um, perimeter of the small plus perimeter of the large, right? Which is 4 root 5 plus 20 root 5. Okay, so how do you add stuff like this? Uh, just look at it this way. It's like 4x plus 20x. What is 4x plus 20x? You add just the coefficients, right? You don't add the x's, so it's going to be 24x. Exactly the same procedure here. 4 root 5 plus 5 root 5. These roots are like x's or are like variables, okay? So uh, if you add 4 root 5 and 20 root 5, you have 24 root 5, right? So there goes your answer. And the answer is option letter C. Okay, so don't forget your geometry formulas. Um, area is of a square is s square, and perimeter of a square is 4s. Okay, so there you have it. Now let's take a look at question A. It says um, log base 10. Of log base 10 of x equals 3. What is x? Well, let's see. I need to get rid of. Um, the log, so I'm going to use something called the inverse property of logarithm, which tells me that a raised to the log base a of b equals b because exponents or logarithms are inverses and they cancel each other out. Okay, so this is my base right here. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a big 10 on both sides. What am I doing? Is what I'm doing is I'm exponentiating both sides using 10 as my base. Okay, so if I exponentiate this side, I'm going to have log base 10, a little log base 10 of x and a little 3 right here, 
Notice both sides have been exponentiated using this as my basis of exponentiation. Okay, so using this inverse property of logarithm here, I can clearly see that this exponent and logarithm cancel each other out. So I'm going to have x equals 10 to the third. All right, 10 to the third is 10 times 10 times 10, which is a thousand. All right, so your answer is option letter B. Okay, let's move on to question nine. Uh, this is a question on composition of functions. We asked to find f of g of x. So what on earth does f of g of x mean? This simply means that you're inputting an input function into a parent function. So this function is clearly inside f, so the input function has been plugged into f. Okay, this is like a baby being plugged into the parent. So um, what this is telling me to do is I'm going to take this see this function right here I'm gonna plug it into the X I'm gonna substitute it for X in the parent function okay so uh, let's organize our our symbol so we get this right so what I'm gonna do is write down the parent function first f of X which is 2x plus 1 now I'm going to uh, replace the X's with the input function which is G okay so I'm gonna clear out the X's so I'm gonna write f parentheses equals two parentheses plus one okay on the left side i'm going to put in the name of my input function what is the input function again let's write it here g of x equals x minus one over two the, the name of my input function or my variable function is g of x put that on the left side and what's the value is x minus one over two so x minus one over two okay so what just happened here i just replaced the x in the parent function f with the input, with the value of the input function g, which is x minus one over two. Okay, so if I simplify the right side, that's going to give me the final answer. So on the left side, we still have f of g of x, <clears throat> and on the right side, notice these two twos divide out, and we have x minus one plus one, minus one plus one are opposite, so they add out to zero. So you have f of g of x equals x. Okay. So there you have it. So um, the answer to that is option letter A. And just FYI, this has a special significance. If you compose this function and get x, and you do the reverse composition, g of f of x, and if you get x, that means that these two functions are inverses of each other. But that's actually the case here. Okay? So that's just an additional layer of uh, information. But uh, there you have it. f of g of x um, is x. Okay? All right. Now let's move on to the next problem, question 10. It says if uh, theta is an acute angle and sine theta is one half, then cosine theta is what? Well, there are two ways of doing this, but they actually require the re recollection of certain pieces of information. Um, the first one involves the use of a Pythagorean identity, which is that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one, okay? So if I substitute the value of sine theta here and solve for cosine, that will give me the answer, all right? So um, to do that, I'm just going to replace sine squared theta with its value, which is 1 half. So I'm going to have a 1 half square plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And when you do this, you have 1 over 4 plus cosine squared theta equals 1, okay? So let's subtract 1 fourth from both sides. And we'll get uh, cosine squared theta. Uh, 1 is the same thing as 4 over 4. So 4 over 4 minus 1 over 4 is 3 fourths. Okay. Just like a dollar, you take away 3 quarters. You, a quarter, you have 3 quarters left. Anyway, so to get cosine by itself, I need to get rid of the square. So I do the opposite of square, which is root. So I read both sides. Take the square root. I'll do that again. Take the square root. Uh, and then we're going to have cosine theta equals plus or minus the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 4, which equals plus or minus root 3 over 2. Okay? So, uh, a little plus or minus, we have just a plus option here, which is sufficient. So, our answer is option D. Okay? Now, this is just one method. Another method of doing this requires knowing your uh, table of trig angles. So, if you know that sine 30 
is one half, and sine 60 divided by 3 over 2, and that cosine 30 is root 3 over 2, and cosine 60 is 1 half. If you know this, then you can do this in a snap. Let me show you. So you have sine theta equals 1 half, right? So I want to get theta by itself, so I plug it in the cosine. So to get that, I'll take the inverse sine of sine theta, both sides, equal the inverse sine uh, of 1 half. Okay? Now, why did I think to use this? Well, because I know that one half shows up in one of these, right? So I know that um, I can work it out using this trick right here. So these two cancel out. So I have theta equals the inverse sine of one half. So the inverse sine of one half basically means that what angle do I take the sine of to get one half? Obviously, it's 30 degrees, right? Because sine 30 degrees is one half. So theta equals uh, 30 degrees. So what is cosine theta going to be? Cosine theta is simply cosine of 30, right? So if I know my unit, my uh, common angles, I know that cosine 30 is root 3 over 2, then I automatically know that this is going to be root 3 over 2. All right, so if you have this chart memorized, uh, this if you have this memorized, you can do this problem without even uh, writing down anything. You can just do it in your head. Anyway. So the answer is option of letter D. So these are the two ways um, of figuring this out. Okay? So there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. You can feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. Um, you can also support the production of videos such as this by commenting down here, telling me what you think, or even liking the video. Okay? More videos can be found at MyGoodShot.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.